It's another Manly Monday, and I'm attempting to pre-record this Manly Monday on the Friday because uh, I got to get caught up in some work over the weekend, and I'd like to play a little God of War, and I'd like to uh, see Wakanda forever, and uh, I'd like to have a life outside of this square. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about continuing the idea of, of centering positive men. I want to talk about the importance specifically of Superman as a role model. And yes, I'm doing it wearing my Kratos from, this is the God of War Ascension shirt. And I always found that, I know this is a side, but I always find this one funny because like you'll notice his hand is sort of, yeah, this is the fun thing about f being a female games journalist is sometimes you get shirts like this and you're like, I love Kratos, but I can only wear this shirt certain places. Clearly, they never thought about female Kratos fans. Yeah. <laughs> but I love Kratos. Um, and uh, yeah, so Superman. I also love Superman. You will notice my Superman pogo stick. You will notice, you know, the Alex Ross art. You will notice there's quite a bit of Superman in my life. Um, I am a big fan of Superman. I always have been, even when people were like dunking on the Blue Boy Scout and everything like that. I think Superman fills a very important um, place in comic book candidate, in part because he did usher in the golden age of superhero comic books in 39, um, but also sort of the place he holds, what he represents, what went behind his creation you know, so on and so forth. Why Superman's important and why it's very important to have those sort of fictional male role models in nerd spaces. Uh, if you like this sort of content, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Again, to people waiting on one-on-one -on -one Leanna Care sessions um, that, that need funding for that. Okay, so if you don't know the history of Superman, Superman was created by two children of Jewish immigrants, Siegel and Schuster, uh, and one of them was uh, spent some time in Toronto. Uh, the Daily Planet is named after what was the Daily Star, what is now the Toronto Star, so on and so forth. But there's been a lot of comic books created by that scenario. And that is not an accident because the idea of having a secret identity was not strange to people like Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, uh, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, uh, so on and so forth, because, you know, they were children of Jewish immigrants living at a time where anti-Semitism was pretty rampant. And so you, you know, Judaism was the Bruno of religions. You didn't talk about it. And you had all these um, uh, secret rituals and secret words in a different language. I mean, uh, the, the suffixes in Kryptonian are bastardized Hebrew. Uh, L means basically, you know, the suffix El, Bethel. Uh, it means basically of God. So Bethel is, I think, place of God, something like that. But um, Bethlehem, yeah. Um, but it was this whole thing of giving back to your community, even when those communities were didn't understand you, were afraid of you, treated you with derision. And the whole Clark Kent Superman dichotomy is especially poignant that way because... You know, Superman was a super powerful guy that did a lot of great things for people. He was a really good dude. But then he played, you know, mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent and wasn't treated like Superman in his everyday life. And I always liked that, you know. As a kid, I always thought, yeah, he's the regular guy. It's the metaphor of the person you really are inside who has all that good stuff and then the person the world decides you are which is the one who's you know relatively powerless and gets picked on all the time at work school home when you factor in sam lane 
And I always thought the juxtaposition of Superman was good and important and meaningful because it sent the message, at least to me, that just because people like treat you like you're weak and a loser and a nerd doesn't mean you are. You know, you could, you're, you, you know, you're a superhero. And people just don't see it. I found that very useful, you know. Uh, I found that very useful as a middle schooler and high schooler who was a C cup by the fifth grade, but people still didn't read as female. That was fun. Except to torture me about being a C cup, C cup by the fifth grade. Um... But, uh, and, and I, I wish there were similar role models like that for women. They tried to do it with Jen Walters and She-Hulk, but we saw how that became a big ass battleground. Uh, but I mean, I guess they sort of did it with Kamala Khan, but you know, they did it more with shows like Hannah Montana right? Or Gem and the Holograms, right? They did do that Superman Clark Kent thing with, with girl shows for a while, for whatever reason. I don't know why it's, it's lost now. But, you know, the thing that's so amazing about Superman is not just that he's strong, right? It's the way he checks his power. It's the different things he does, the different limits he puts on himself so he doesn't become a tyrant and I do think that superheroes that embody just because you can doesn't mean you should are things that these are stories we can really use right now and of course far too often all DC comics is let's mind control Superman let's turn Superman evil you know the injustice thing let's do Red Sun Superman let's let's not make Superman Superman and so finally you have James Gunn coming in and the interesting thing about James Gunn running DC now is when he got cancelled by Disney and Marvel uh, the story is they really wanted him to do Superman he's like no my head is a mess I'm not in the headspace to do this it's too big I'm too broken I need to do something smaller and so he did Suicide Squad and then he did Peacemaker but I do think James Gunn is the guy to do a good Superman movie or at least be at the helm and put the right person on a Superman movie because you see those little pockets of decency even in a character like Peacemaker, even in a character like uh, uh, Ratcatcher, the, the Ratcatcher 1, not Ratcatcher 2, in uh, Suicide Squad. Uh, even, I'm blanking, shoot, on Idris Elba's character now. There's so many dudes with guns and masks that I confuse them all. Deathstroke, Deadshot, I don't know. Um, but you, you know what I mean? Like that little moment where, where he pets the little rat. And he's scared of rats, but he, he pets the little rat. What was the rat's name? Timothy? Like that, that is the stuff about James Gunn that makes me think they will finally be able to do a Superman movie and not fuck it up. And, you know, all the stuff's coming out about how they kept blocking another Henry Cavill Superman movie and how Henry Cavill's saying he's excited to do a joyous Superman. And I absolutely do think that a joyous Superman is what we all need. But a joyous Superman does not mean a Superman without struggle, right? Because the challenge with writing Superman has always been he's so physically powerful. How do you create meaningful challenges for him? Well, he's still one guy. He can only be at one place at one time, except in that horrible movie where he turned time backwards by spinning around the earth. Um... But, uh, you know, we don't need a, a Zod. And, and the whole Superman 2 phenomenon is like the way Star Wars got bogged down with Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie. That's easy to say. It's as easy to say as, you know, the Two Towers is the best 
Lord of the Rings movie because it's the middle movie. You have to do no setup. You have to do no evolution. So no resolution. It's all action sequences and character development. Of course you think it's the best movie. It has to do the least. <laughs> and this drives me crazy because it happens all again with trilogies. They always go dark for the second one because you can, because that's the... Act three, scene one of the classical five act structure where everything goes to shit. It's an extremely easy thing to write, right? And that, and that was the structural problem with She-Hulk because the act three, scene one, oh my God, everything's dark, came to the second last episode and they just bailed out. But a lot of those Disney Plus introductory series feel like just the first three acts of a five act structure. It's just, okay, intro, and now we wait, <laughs> right? It's all set up. But, but with Superman, you need to do the moral test with him. You need to test his goodness, because goodness is a choice. It's a, this belief that good characters are boring is just, first of all, it's, it's an attitude held by shitty people. But it's also just people being extremely overeducated in writing and they, they overthink it, they overanalyze it. And instead of going, what did I like as a kid and why did I like it? Why did that speak to me? You know, or, or what are my comfort entertainments and why do they speak to me? They go, oh, Hemingway is brilliant, and this is brilliant, and that is brilliant, and brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And it's all about status and gatekeeping instead of what these blockbuster movies and comic books and TV shows are designed to do, which is two-thirds entertain and comfort. You know, you entertain, you comfort, you make a point with the remaining third. And a really good movie weaves it all together, right? But you you have to do that entertainment. You have to lift the spirit. And Superman, that's woven into the DNA of the character because of the fact that, of course, he was created just as World War II was on the horizon. And so there was all that Superman and the war effort going on. And I think it's interesting that the one they did that with the DC universe, they put Wonder Woman back to World War One, And so that's sort of become her thing. But I mean, when it was truth, justice in the American way, now it's just truth and just truth and justice and the hope for the better tomorrow, I think. And if that's what they're going with, okay, how do we do the hope for the better tomorrow part? That's your thesis for your Superman movie. What Superman story can you tell that is hope for a better tomorrow? The building blocks of a better tomorrow, not the better tomorrow today. And I do think that, that you know, they talk about Superman as being a symbol of hope and a symbol of inspiration. And again, MCU stole that with Captain America. They nailed that with Cap. But it didn't start with Captain America. It started with freaking Superman. And, you know, DC has so retreated, retreated the ground on that one. Like Russia from a Ukrainian city. They just retreated. Because like, oh, Injustice sold a lot grim dark. People want grim dark. And if you watched any of my content with like Nerdette or, or um, with Tristan or with Robert Willing, you know you've seen my distaste for another grimdark Batman story. And it's not that I don't like Batman. It's not that I don't see a place for that character in the DCU. It's that it's saying nothing new. At this point, we all know how to roll around in nihilism. We go on Twitter and laugh at Elon Musk, Bob's your uncle, right? Um, but we don't know anymore. I see so many people not knowing how to hope, not knowing how to strive. And I do think that there's a perfect Superman antagonist, a perfect Superman villain in Brainiac. The perfect Superman movie for this time is right 
there, right? Superman fighting a computer and its constructs and all the misinformation, disinformation, nihilism, distrust, misery, upward social comparisons, reinforcing spirals, so on and so forth. You got one guy who's a symbol against the algorithm in moderation. It's man versus the machine, literally. And you can have the big fights with the alien stuff at the beginning. And you can have uh, Superman fighting the big like brainiac tentacles. And you can, I'm so, I'm so tired of the, the Superman goes up and just floats because they're too afraid to have Superman punch something because it's violent. Have him fighting a bunch of robots. You know, I, I think they put parademons and something else, but robots, Superman can punch robots. Nobody's going to feel bad if Superman beats up robots, right? But yeah, have it, it just, you know, and you can have the kids, okay, but keep the kids young. None of this, the super sons in the Superman books were wonderful because they were young and they were innocent and it showed how John Kent Boyd, uh, was it Damien? Yeah, there, there was sort of a light in there, but but he boyed and it was sweet and it was nice. And, and Damian Wayne just became such a little fucking puke. Uh, but, you know, not Jason Todd level puke, but ugh, it was nice when they were 10 year old boys. Because a lot of us need to be able to get back to not the maturity of a 10 year old, but the hope and the ability to just be of a 10 year old. And that's what uh, a hope inspiring property does for me. That's why I loved The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It appealed to my inner eight year old. Not maturity wise, that, that feeling that the best days were ahead before life stomped that out of me, right? That's what Superman's got to do. That's what Superman did at the end of the Depression. That's what Superman did during the war. That's what Superman did in the 80s. That Superman has got to come back. Because he can't solve every problem. He can't solve, you know, the, the, the individual things in people's lives. He can influence. He can't come in and take over. No single person should. Because the, and, and the big problem, they're just not going to bother with the origin in this because Superman coming from Kansas now, it, you know, um, but that small town idea that, that humility, that, you know, the, the friendliness, the general kind of innocent regard for for people that happens in small towns. I see the, the double think where I live all the time is there's some, you know, some farmers who are pretty rough around the edges and they'll talk in a certain way that isn't, you know, isn't PC speak, right? But no matter what they think about certain groups of people, if any person was right in front of them, they'd help them. And I, I do think that's an element of Superman. He doesn't have to understand all the deep nuances of an issue. It's truth, justice, hope for a better tomorrow, right? Like, who's telling the truth? Okay. What's the most just outcome? Okay. Where's the hope? And, and justice, seeing Superman struggle with justice, giving him a series of moral conundrums that are truly difficult to solve and to see how he solves them. That would be a very, very, those are, those are the Superman stories I really like. I remember this comic when Lex Luthor was president and, and Talia was running LexCorp. And she deliberately set a trail of breadcrumbs for Clark Kent, the reporter, to follow. Because she was trying to ruin Luthor's company. Because he, she didn't want to be there. And she put out this trail of breadcrumbs and Superman was all, 
I'll do this as Superman, and I'll do this as Superman, and I'll stop this toxic damage, and I'll do this, and I'll do that. And at the end, Talia just gets pissed off. It's like, I didn't want Superman. I wanted Clark Kent. I didn't need a superhero here. I needed a reporter. And I thought that was such a great story, you know? And I mean, the other element of Superman and why I liked the Super Sons and I liked Son of Kal-El much better, but less, much less, is that Superman is super dad. And they do it on Superman Lois, Superman Lois quite well where with teenagers and the the confounding the struggle that Clark has with his sons. And it's really well done for the most part, especially when his sons legitimately make a mistake and you see the difference between Lois's very human response and Clark too often errs on the side of underreaction. And it eventually catches up to him. And, and he, he has to get more involved. Right? And the, the way they balance it and the way they make it a family dynamic and they make Superman and Lois a team on that show. They do some really schmaltzy ongoing storylines and plots, but that family thing saves even the the shittiest parts of that show i mean it's having the cw problem of of villain character arcs going on too long the villain should be like half season or, or if you need to contract the person the whole season like do have a season redeem the villain have another villain that was sort of lurking in the background uh something like that but yeah those 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 moral dilemmas and showing Superman's idea of justice, Superman's idea of truth. Because truth isn't just about facts, that's fact, right? Truth is the f moral framing you put on the facts. And what Superman believes to be true is inspired, is, is informed by his hope for a better tomorrow, his optimism. The one thing that the Superman and Lois show does well, but I think that a film could do with more nuance, is he always gives um, people a chance, even if it means he'll have more to clean up later, he will give people a chance to fail because he gives people a chance to succeed. And I do think that that's why Brainiac would be such a good villain for the joyous Henry Cavill Superman movie because they can show Superman using technology for good. They can show him playing video games with his son, right? They can show ways he uses social media to inspire people power, right? It can show the positive impacts of interconnection as long as we do it in a hopeful way that is focused ultimately long arc of history towards truth, justice, and a hope for a better tomorrow. Instead of this thing we're in right now of false nostalgia and pining for a past that never existed or using a funhouse mirror, you know, George R. R. Martin false nihilistic myth of the past to excuse shitty behavior now because, oh, okay, humanity is still a disaster, but at least we weren't that. It was never quite that bad. And there's a real possibility here. Maybe somebody from DC will, will see this and go, get her, she has good ideas. But there's this one guy in the comments who just keeps busting my balls about me liking the Sam Wilson Captain America speech. And I'm touching on this because I thought it was brilliant of how they wrote a black Captain America cap speech. And we are, there's another interesting thing to explore with Superman because he is an alien and so he looks like a white man, but he's an alien. And 
it could be a very interesting thing to use characters like, you know, John Henry Irons or some of the other characters. I don't know, maybe bring in Hawkman uh, from from Black Adam or something like some kind of after effect of what happened in, uh, was it Kandak? Um, something. Or have him interact with Amanda Waller or something like that. Seeing Superman not really connect with the struggles of oppressed groups, right? Because Superman doesn't have the knowledge of what it means to feel small and afraid all the time. And to show him using empathy, and this is one of the moral problems, right? To see him not knowing what it's like to walk in those shoes, but listening and and getting it by knowing he never he's he'll never know what that feels like none of this her name was martha narcissistic bullshit okay he's never gonna know he's never gonna know what it, like it's like to feel small powerless not cared for not have family that loves him he's never going to know that he doesn't have to to recognize that that is going to affect people's choices and know that that doesn't mean he judges them and that doesn't mean he pities them. It means he listens to them and admits he doesn't know, he can't relate and goes, okay, what do you think we should do? And he goes, up, hey, you, you should really listen to this person. Right. Oh, yeah, I'll get a meeting. No, we got five minutes. Listen to her now. Little things like that. You know, set an example of not doing it for someone, not coming in and being Mr. Fix It. Because not everyone wants the strong man to come in and fix their problem. People want a world where they can fix their own problems. And that's what I want to see the hope for a better tomorrow. Superman working with different people to create a world found, founded on truth and justice where people can fix their own problems without his intervention. Because somebody who um, constantly needs a Superman to come in and speak for them because people won't listen to them they're never gonna feel truly fulfilled. And that's a big misunderstanding about heroism. And you know, it's it's compounded more and more in the, in the work I'm doing with like, it's not therapy and the one-on-one -on -one sessions and all that stuff that, you know, people can't spend their whole lives waiting to be saved. People have to be given the tools where they're existing more often than not in a place of stability. That's the goal. That's the goal. You know, the goal is not to have Superman come in and catch people as they're falling. It's for them never to fall off the roof in the first place. And it could be really, really interesting if they got that into sort of a metaphor without it being the fucking schmaltzy, like, I don't want to see a single Nazi stand in in a joyous Superman movie. Enough. No, I don't want it. It's too easy. Do better. <laughs> you know, be more inventive. Because I mean, let's face it, Zod was just people, people forget that was the fucking Soviets back in the day, the dark Kryptonians in, in Superman 2. Come up with something new. Use Brainiac, but use the people who kind of helped build Brainiac and who Brainiac is kind of manipulating through their ego and so on and so forth. Um, it could be really good and it could say a lot of things about, you know, how you can protect people and how you can be a symbol without stifling people and making them feel 
small and resentful because they can't do anything on their own. You need a Superman to do everything for them. And I, I see so many people who have such damaged self-esteem and damaged self-concept because they've never really felt like they've been able to stand on their own. And the hope for the better tomorrow is solving for that. And I'll leave that there. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or help people stand on their own. Buy a one-time Leanna Care session for somebody who can use it but can't afford it. We need two. This month we got a goal of four every month, but I need two urgently. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching. Manly Mondays.